here we have all of Nikon's 45 megapixel offerings from the D850, Z7 II, Z8, and Z9. This is a little size comparison for you right there. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna concentrate on these two guys. So those guys are gonna go away. And then eventually we will compare Z8 with other cameras as well. But let's us tell you what Z8 is and what is not compared to Nikon Z9. First of all, is obviously the side and the weight of the camera. If you've noticed, that 9 is a little bit bigger and heavier as well. Mm -hmm. The weight-wise is 910 grams on Nikon Z8 and it's 1 kilo 340 grams on Nikon Z9. So it feels definitely a little bit heavier. Yeah, and a lot of that weight is obviously in the built-in grip portion of the camera. It's got a heavier battery uh, and obviously has that bigger base. Looking at the battery, it's probably the bigger means better and you can definitely expect a much longer life from battery of Nikon Z9. So we easily tested this camera for about 2000 shots with no issues whatsoever. Some people go longer than this. Now, SIPA rated the Nikon Z8 at 300 shots. Now, in real world, we would expect about the same performance as Nikon Z7 and Z6 cameras, which we, uh, for steels, we've got about maybe five, 600 shots out of it before it going to about 10, 15% of charge. Speaking of power delivery, you can get EH8P new AC adapter for both cameras, and that one has 45 watts output, which is better than 15 watts output of EH7P, which existed before the Nikon Z8 was announced with a new AC adapter. Now, one thing that the Z8 has that the Z9 doesn't have is actually two separate USB-C ports. So you have one specifically for power delivery and one for data transfer. This means that you can simultaneously charge your camera whilst also shooting and transferring information, let's say if you want to use the camera as a webcam or connect it up to your computer for tethering. Couple of examples, you're in the studio, you're taking a shot, you want it to be uh, transferred straight to your MacBook or any other laptop, but you're also shooting a lot and you want your camera to be charged at the same time. So obviously long cables, don't trip over, health and safety first. Now, if you are live streaming for lots of hours, like we have people streaming for 24 hours, you know, which is a limit of YouTube, I think, you know, then you can have a constant power delivery to your camera. All you need is lots of snacks, a nice empty bottle for certain things, but camera is going to continue to stream without any issues. That's right. Some of you may write in the comments that we don't have the body caps on those cameras. That is true. However, what we want to show you that the both cameras now have a sensor shield and that helps when you change the lens. Now, by default, this is not active in the menus of the camera, so you will need to enable it in the setup menu. But once it's done, as soon as you turn off the camera, this little shield comes up, protects the sensor from the dust and keeps it clean. Now, keep in mind, this is not the actual shutter. Both cameras don't have mechanical shutters at all. So it uses electronic shutter and therefore, well, first of all, you're not gonna have any shutter issues because there's nothing to break there. But second of all, you've got a protection now, which we didn't have on cameras like Zx6, Z7 and other mirrorless cameras before. And if you're anything like me, you need your sense cleaned very often. <laughs> Those of you with a keen eye will notice that the top of the cameras look slightly different. So on the Z9, we have this raised mode selection dial here. This actually allows you to pick whether you're shooting in single, continuous low speed, continuous high speed, etc. So the Z8 is missing that raised selection dial here. We suspect that it may be because this houses the GPS unit, but you have to select your release mode from the I menu or put it into a function button, which may be a small issue for some people, but hopefully something you can easily get around. Speaking of GPS, Z9 has a proper GPS unit installed inside the camera, so it will record a geographical data into the metadata of your files that you've taken. Now, Z8 doesn't have one, so you will be able to use Snowbridge to geotag your images, but there's no dedicated unit inside the camera for that. One thing that Z9 has over Z8 is the LAN internet ethernet port, which is a proper dedicated port like this on the camera. Now, Z8 doesn't have one, but because you have those USB sockets, actually the transfer data transfer socket allows you to buy a dongle, 
a LAN dongle that will convert the USB-C socket into a proper LAN dedicated socket. So you will be able to connect your camera to the network if you want to. That's right. Another socket that the Z9 has that the Z8 doesn't is the PC Sync socket, which is located up here. For those of you that desperately need a PC Sync socket for your studio flashes, let's say, you can buy a hot shoe adapter for the Z8, which will allow you to connect your old pin cylinder cables. But Absolutely. I don't think it's a deal breaker. For us who would like to be wired, Six. Nikon AS15 should be the one to get. Let's talk about the built-in battery pack of the Z9, which obviously the Z8 is missing. We have several buttons on the bottom here which are not located on the Z8, so let's go through those. We have a dedicated voice memo button so that you can tag an image with a voice note after you've taken it. You can actually do this on the Z8 if you assign it to the movie recording button in custom control assignment for playback which is F3 in the custom settings menu. Yeah, so in there you choose the record button there and then in the list of settings you choose voice memo. And then all you have to do is actually press playback button to select a file, let's say image, and then you press record to record a little comment. It gives you 60 seconds as it does with the Z9. Next up, our quality button for your JPEG and RAW recording quality is located on the back here. On the Z8, it's in the I menu, but you can custom assign it to one of your function buttons. Then we have the white balance button, which on the Z8 is located on the top panel here, but what it replaces on the top panel is actually the flash button. So what does the flash button do? I'm glad you asked. So what it allows to do is actually, if you've got a, something like SB700, SB5000 on top of your camera, it will allow you to set up a red eye reduction, a rear sync, little things like this that you would normally do for built-in flash on some of the other Nikon cameras. While Nikon Z8 doesn't have a dedicated flash button on the body of the camera, you can assign it to eye menu into the, in, in the custom settings of the camera. Menu. Now, last up, Obviously, the Z9 has vertical shooting, so it does also have an eye menu button for vertical shooting here, which can be quite handy if you tend to change settings whilst in portrait shooting mode. But let's talk about Elephant that is not in the room, and I'm talking about MBN12 battery pack that Nikon announced together with the camera. Well, aesthetically, it's not the prettiest in the world, and it will make Z8 a little bit bigger than Z9. Technically, you can get similar functionality with the battery pack. What it gives you is front and back wheel, shutter release button, record button, exposure compensation buttons on the battery pack. What it won't give you is those little buttons in there, and it will make the camera a little bigger. So keep that in mind. It doesn't take ENL18 battery that Nikon Z9 does, but it takes two ENL15 batteries that, come with, uh, that you can get with the camera, and it will allow you the hot swap for one of the batteries. Now let's talk about the memory cards. So Nikon Z9 takes two CF Express cards, which are really, really fast cards. It's one of the fastest card formats available at the moment. Now Nikon Z8 takes only one CF Express card, but it also has an SD card slot. So where does it make a difference? Well, when you're shooting at 20 frames per second, full raw, and your take is like 60 seconds long, then Nikon Z9 will allow you to record to both cards simultaneously. Now, Nikon Z8 will be limited by the speed of SD card. So now the fastest SD card is about 300 megabytes per second, while the fastest CF Express cards are about 17, 1800 megabytes per second reading and writing speeds. So in terms of this, yes, for this type of occasions, if you're recording to dual memory cards, then Z9 will outperform Z8. If you just record to one card, and this card is CF Express, they should perform about the same. Speaking of memory cards, the Z9 has a lock on the memory card door so that you don't accidentally open it. In fact, I can't even intentionally open it. There we go. That's really good. <laughs> and Z8 has a very similar door that we have on cameras like Z6 and Z7. So you just kind of pull it towards yourself and then you just release it, it comes out. Another perhaps very specific feature for professionals is the fact that Z9 has a Kensington lock compatibility here. It has a little socket so you can plug in your Kensington lock. So let's say you're in at an event and you don't want someone to run off with your camera, you can lock it, which is great. They can still take your lens though. So keep that in mind, there is no Kensington lock on the lens. So maybe, maybe leave your camera with Kensington lock, remove your lens, take your 600 mil with you. That's right, just put it in your pocket. <laughs> 
One thing you will notice while looking at the front of the cameras is that the Z9 has function one, two, and three located on the front of the camera. It also has an autofocus selection button right here. That's the same on the Z8, but the Z8 is missing its all important function three button. It only has function one and two. Function three is located here on the protect image button. So it's a dual purpose button and it doesn't have a function four. Whereas the Z9, has a function four in place of the protect button. It's almost like the bigger body allows more buttons to be installed on the camera. Yeah, <laughs> you think? Go figure. <laughs> Good. One of the things that Z9 has over Z8 as well is in the custom settings, there's a D3 limited release option, which allows you to check or uncheck certain continuous shooting modes that you cycle through while you're setting it up on the camera. Now, Z8 operates more in the fashion of Z6 and Z7, where you press the release mode and then you set it up either with the front or back wheel, the either continuous low or continuous high mode or amount of frames you want on those modes as well. At this point in time, also no, sorry. At the point of release, the Z8 has a shorter recording time than the Z9. It's 90 minutes instead of 125 minutes. Although I think that could potentially be changed. The only problem is you may risk overheating in a smaller body like this. Now let's talk about the build quality of the camera. So Z9 is full magnesium alloy build with fantastic weather ceiling, similar to cameras like D6 and D5s back in the day. So it is a flagship. It's probably the toughest camera in the world right now. Now, Nikon Z8 is partly magnesium alloy, but also partly carbon fiber. There's a new material called Cerebo, which is basically a thermoplastic infused with carbon fiber. It's really, really tough. We've seen the videos, it's fantastic. Now, in terms of weather ceilings, it's similar to weather ceilings of G850, which is this camera over here. And for some of you, a lot of you who use this camera, you know that this camera is fantastic and can be used in harsh environments. So this one is good as this. There's no problem, and it's also gonna be better than cameras like Z6 and Z7. To answer a question that has been asked of us by many, the Z8 does not have the U1, U2, U3 user settings. Instead, it has custom settings banks, much like the Z9 and the D850, in fact. So you won't be able to save all of your settings into one quickly accessible thing on the top, you will have to go into the menu to change your custom settings banks. That system is very flexible and it's been around for a very long time before the U1, U2, U3 has been introduced. Now, it has shooting menus and custom settings menus. It's uh, four banks in each and you can set it up, you can rename it. And it requires a bit of learning when you do it first, but once you learn how to do this, a lot of people swear by them. Now, U1, U2, U3 settings reserved for the mid-range or entry-level cameras from anything to D3000 series up to Z7 Mark II. Now for some features that we think will end up in the Z9. Obviously the Z8 is new and shiny, but they should filter up to the flagship body. First up is the 10-bit HAFE support. So that's high efficiency image format. And essentially the Z8 has it right now, but the Z9 doesn't. It's an uncompressed JPEG. Absolutely. There's some other fun things like portrait impression balance, skin softening functions for both stills and videos. Again, this is something that can be implemented via software, so we think that those are going to come in. Yeah, then we have our autofocus improvements, including airplane detection mode, which means that if you are a planes, trains and automobiles type person, then you will have better recognition from the Z8 than you would have from the Z9 at the moment, but we do think that that will come in a firmware update later.
Now there's also some video features that have been added to Z8 and at the moment don't exist on Z9. There's a new tone mode setting for HLD and SDR mode as well as HLD setting for picture control mode. Also for the HLD video at the moment Z8 has a base ISO of 400 ISO and Z9 is the 800. So we expect those features to be implemented in Nikon Z9 with the future updates. All right, and that's it, folks. Those are all the differences that we found so far between the two cameras. If you know more, do please tell us in the comments below. In the meantime, we're going to be doing more tests with these cameras, so give our channel a like. Don't forget to subscribe so that you get all of the updates, and we'll see you very soon. <laughs> it's fine. God, it's fine. Uh, good. So we expect we um, so we expect those features to be implemented in Nikon Z9 in a few. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if that's humus. <laughs> I always want to say that with like some kind of <laughs> humus. <laughs> hey, support. <laughs>